a lot of you, a lot of you have been trying to make masterpieces out of your studies. Specifically, this person and this person. And whether or not it started off as a study, I can't imagine, um, you know, planning your image, planning a picture, a, a sort of a pinup of Superman and making the mistake of making him pose like that as Superman. That is clearly something you stumbled into. And that's what kind of just clicks in my head. Oh, you didn't really you, you didn't really plan it to be Superman. This was originally a body study or something like that. Or some sort of study. Like I, I don't know. I'm not you. I don't know exactly the, your method or how you went about painting this image, but this should be a study. This should be grayscale. It should be backgroundless and you should continue experimenting with the way light reacts on form. I say this a lot because making a masterpiece is a big deal. The difference between you, a beginner, and a master is that the master makes less masterpieces than you do. <laughs> you guys try more masterpieces than masters themselves. That is a very, very big problem. It's an, it's an epidemic that's been running through and um, it's not right it's not right. I'm going to be strict. I'm going to be that one that says, that doesn't pat you on the back. My friend and I were talking last night. He said you should be a little bit more lenient. You know, you should give a love sandwich and then in between the buns of love, you, that's not so wrong, but, um, you know, you should give the critique in the sandwich or you have a compliment, then critique and then compliment. I don't believe in that. I don't, I don't know how to do that because if there's a compliment to be had, then, you know, it'll just come out by itself. There's no need to to pose it or to rehearse it or to force it. So I'm not going to compliment when it's not time to. And I will be strict all the time. And I will be unforgiving. And I will point out. And I will put you on, on, on the spot. Because that's how I teach. Because I really, I don't bullshit. I really want you guys to improve. You guys are not going to improve if you're going to waste all your creative energy trying to make a masterpiece out of, out of everything that you draw. The difference between you guys and a master is that the master tries less masterpieces than you do. Everybody write that back to me right now. Uh, no, my friend is actually really smart. No, 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 no need to attack him. But I'm saying, um, it, it, I don't want you guys... Everyone write that back to me, first of all. And I don't want you guys to constantly make this mistake. You guys are constantly trying to make masterpieces out of your studies or you don't even bother with the study you go straight for the masterpiece as if that's what's going to make you a better artist no what's going to make you a better artist is you is your just appreciation of the physics in the art the light the color saturation the form the value ladders the the gray scales doing all that better is what's going to make you draw better so one day you're going to have to draw a superman and you're going to draw him well is exactly what I think. Um, why is it saying an error has occurred? Is it just because I connected my tablet? Did it just log me out for a sec or something? <sighs> Masters make less masterpieces than us noobs. Yeah, because they actually plan it. When if if you had planned the Superman image. You would not have made the mistake of making him pose like this and with the threat in it, with the threat of an incoming laser laser scorch. You know, there's other ways to, to, to represent, you know, set up the stage for this specific detail of Superman, the fact that he can throw out lasers. Don't just dress it up. Look at all the sparkles and the and, and, and the lack of focus. The focal point should be always focused here. It's a portrait and it you flooded out his entire eye area with lasers and now all of a sudden this has become indirectly has become the focal point because look at all that crazy detail. Over here we have another example of this. You should be studying. You should you should gray out the background. You should be um, sculpting with a light in mind. You should not constantly try to present some sort of crazy and stage some sort of crazy character design, some sort of crazy character. I don't blame you guys because you're all here because you want to create. So you're going to stumble into accidentally thinking you're ready to create. 
You need to study the science of creation first. You need to study how to make before you make. Not, you know, like when you tell a kid to make or, you know, make so that they can shit in the potty, but before you make anything, you have to learn what the craft is. None of you are actually studying the actual craft. None of you are really studying the tools. You guys are just stumbling in there with one fundamental mistake collapsing over another, and then you ask yourselves, why am I not improving? You ask yourselves, why is it so hard for me to take critique? This is where, if you want to improve anywhere, it's in this community, because I don't, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to say, you should not be doing this, because this is a bad drawing. Because you are flooding out the entire form of a character you're trying to showcase in complete shadow because in your mind you haven't yet really experienced what it means to sculpt something. That's why you use the shadow as a crutch and you hit all the stuff you're really afraid of. All I see is fear. All I see is anxiety. And here, all I see is uh, I'm painting this one thing. I spent five hours on it. Let me just throw everything on this canvas so that this can be my crowning achievement this year. This is the first masterpiece of my year. If any of you have made the, co the mistake of saying, I want to make more masterpieces in 2016, you're, mis you're highly mistaken. Uh, a lot of you recognize me as your teacher, and because I, you, you, there's many reasons why someone would consider another person their teacher. N knowledge, experience, whatever the reason is why you think I'm a teacher for you, it, me at my position as your teacher, don't don't try to do masterpieces. I don't try to do masterpieces. They are they are very there there are a lot of planning. It's a lot of planning. It's a dedication. You are going to be pregnant with that masterpiece for months before it finally pops out of your body and into a painting. It's a it's a trial. It's a it's a it's a lengthy process creating a masterpiece. It's no it's no three day business. All right. So stop it with the masterpieces, for the love of God. Because if you want to improve, you have to break it down. This today, today, I'm going to study this kind of cast shadow. Today, I'm going to study cast shadow fade. Today, I'm going to study facial symmetry. I'm going to make sure that I can symm create symmetry without having to flip the canvas too much and just eyeball it. Today, I'm going to study how to keep my values high. Today, I'm going to study the value... Uh, variety, the value spectrum in skin, in light skin, in darker skin, in mid-tone skin, in tan skin. Today I'm going to study how to make the eye look more realistic. I need to figure out exactly what temperature the waterline sits in between the whites of the eye and the skin. That's the kind of stuff you should be studying day to day. You shouldn't be at the first sight of something that you've completed as a study. Start dressing it up with color and, and props and background and sparkles and rainbows and, and lasers. That, that, that's so bad. No one else is telling you this online. Nobody else is telling you this. No one out there is saying this to you guys. I don't have that many viewers. I don't have thousands of people visiting me. I have only this, this modest number, and I'm going to try to get as many of you in this 51 members of you right now, this 51 people, as many of you to believe me as you can. It's not going to help you, so stop. Take it out of your mind. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget masterpieces entirely. And just study. Just gray out that background. I promise you, after like a month of graying out, people pay me good money. And what I force them to do is don't paint in color. You're not painting in color. I refuse to allow them to paint in color. When they go back to color, the improvement is unfucking believable. They 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 like they're so particular about their colors. They take forever to choose their colors, and I'm watching them, and I love that. I love that they're taking forever to choose their colors. Their grayscales are so careful. They don't even hit blacks anymore. I have to force them to use some black. So that's all. That's People pay me money to tell them that. I'm telling you this right now without charging you for it. Stop painting in color for a while. If you know you have rendering issues, if you know you have blending problems, if you know you have cast shadow problems, if you know you have contrast problems, stop painting in color. Step away from that. If you want to study fabrics, go ahead, study it in the same image. But forget the background, because right now you're, you're so... You, you need to continue your study of form and anatomy. You really haven't spent enough time mastering composition. So at me, any master would never throw this many details in the back. Because detail, these details resemble freckles. Freckles, we leave them composed around the mid area here. In a portrait, the radius, the 
detail is the focal focal point. The one hundred percent the one hundred percent detail area is the face, and that you've thrown super detail spots, pixel wide spots in the background that have completely interrupted the composition. Quit composition for a little bit. Gray out that background. Focus all your energy and all your creative force just to perfect anatomy for a little bit. He needs some cast shadows on his face. He needs some more structure on his face. He's got this crazy contrast here, and all all the attention goes here. But I really want to see something about him. Why is he posing? Like, give it a narrative, or else you just have a random magazine pose, trying to illustrate some sort of of uh, I don't know personality about Superman that I've never seen. I've never witnessed. He's pretty shy. He's a pretty shy guy. He would never pose like this. <clears throat> and then you've got the colors. The colors are a big issue here. You're not matching or harmonizing your colors. There's no central wash. And if there's no central wash, it means that you have no experience yet with environments. So it's one issue after another that you've layered over. It's like it's like making the wrong kind of batter for each layer of the cake, but you're still going to use it. You know you use the wrong recipe. You know these don't match, but you still layered them on and on just just for the sake of saying I made a cake. It's it doesn't work like that. You have to perfect. The more you perfect, the more particular you are with what you're studying that day, the faster you will improve at that. When I say faster you will improve, I'm not talking next year. I'm talking next week. Next week, you'll be better at drawing an eye. Next week, you'll be better at drawing a nose. It's not a year from now. I'm not talking long range. I'm not talking years from now. I'm not talking invest today, the seed of study, so that in the future you may you may improve. No, I'm not saying this is a long-term investment. This is, this is immediate gratification comes out of this method of study. This is what I, this is what people, this is what I charge people to tell them. This is what I charge people to mediate for them. Every single day, I'm sitting there, three sessions, four sessions, I'm constantly repeating this information to them specifically and how they can specifically improve. The difference is here, here is that there's a lot of you. So really, it's, it's, a, it's, it's probably the most terrible thing that I've seen lately with my students. It's, um, you know, private or public. It's, it's something that needs to stop. <clears throat> so let's see what everyone is saying. How does Issa make us feel? She makes me feel empowered. <laughs> um... Yeah, it looks like he needs a piece of straw hanging out of his mouth, yeah. I have a, I think I have some fear of it taking too long. A lot of you, Black Oreo, that's a great question. A lot of you have a fear of it taking too long. A lot of you. Um, I had a fear of it taking too long until I started studying properly, until I started my form studies. I know that if I draw form studies now, they'll be way better than the form studies I've ever drawn. It, it, it's 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 every day that you improve and if you study properly if you if you know that you're doing it right you know that in a week's time you will do better it's like working out you can do the form you know really bad form for a for for i don't know any kind of lateral raises let's call them or 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 a deadlift you can do the crappiest form and you think you're so good and you do like 15 of them every single day. Some pro comes by and says, dude, your form is shit. You need to fix your form. Your, your back is, is completely arched. You're not leaning forward properly. Your legs aren't shoulder width apart. Whatever it is. If you don't fix your form, you're never going to improve that, that fast. So as soon as you fix your form in a deadlift, you feel it the next day. It feels like shit. You feel it. You feel all those muscles that you had never woken up you know, they're going to hurt because you actually use them properly. So it's not a matter of the quantity that you do, it's the quality of your study. So this, this is a, this is the opposite of what I want you guys to do. I'm sorry that I've made you, um, Marty Bonnet, uh, I'm sorry that I've made you a cautionary tale, but it's, it's what I do. It's, it's what I have to say. No one else is saying it out there. And uh, that disappoints me. No one else is saying it. Everyone is just off showing off their masterpieces, making you want to draw a masterpiece. No one is really showing off their studies. People should have galleries dedicated to studies. Studies should be what we call masterpieces because studies are amazing. Just looking at the way a, a pro practices with lines, looking at pro's sketches, you know, that's, that's stuff that drives me nuts. I love that. It inspires me. You know, it, it, it's it's months and months of work till you get a masterpiece, and that's that's all that it that's all that it really is. It's just constant work on the same image. It's, it's a test of your patience and the test of your boredom. You know, the capacity of boredom that you're capable of. So please quit it with the masterpieces. I, I feel like I'm gonna have to probably you know this 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 uh, mantra of mine is never gonna stop. I'm I'm always gonna be talking about these issues. But uh, I hope they help. This has a couple of issues in it. 
I'm going to cover these. So it looks like portraiture theme for today. I'm sorry I took that time to just say this. Um, I really felt like I should. I've been looking through the critique community a lot. And that's all that I've been seeing lately. People trying masterpieces too early. There is no shame in, in just studying something and posting it. Because that's, that's going to be your crowning achievement. There's no shame in, in your masterpieces being studies. Oh, fuck. That was two of them. <clears throat> there is another one. Um, so let's see what... <clears throat> it's not boring, it's fun. Okay, that's good. Sketches and studies are the best. The juice. <clears throat> Preach, it's done. Thank you. Um... Oh, I'm happy that you like when I get real. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think I ever not be real, but maybe sometimes I'm just too bubbly and I forget to slap you guys on the wrist. I think everyone who takes art serious has this fear, yeah. Well, just drawing and being random is good for mileage, it's not good for mastering a topic. You must be able to draw the subject at least accurately from your head, yeah. Yeah, I, I got it, like, you guys know already, you guys know all this, you know, hearing me is just, you know, you guys are going to agree with me, but you guys know all of this. You guys, you guys, I know you, you, you've you thought of this yourselves the next day you turned your study into a masterpiece and gave it an OC name and, like, an original character and officially it became your next furry idea. Like, I know some of you do this and you're aware that you do this. Stop doing it. You know, there's no dignity in an undeveloped character. Your beautiful character. Give it some time or else it'll be premature. It'll be like a premature baby. All of your fa all of your studies that are most likely failures at the time, because they're studies, they're a process. They're part one of the success. They're, they're a failure until you succeed. All of those are premature babies. Okay? Why would you want to give birth early? That's terrible. <laughs> give it some time to develop. Don't impregnate yourself with all these crazy ideas and not have the skill to back it up. Download photo. Okay. So everyone write this back to me. Making masterpieces too early is like having a premature baby. <clears throat> Let it develop so that it can come to term and be the most beautiful child that represents you and your legacy as an artist. All right? Let's try to summarize that in a couple words and write it back to me. <laughs> Whoever does it gets a kiss. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with this. This is beautiful. This is what I want to see when it comes to portraits. I want to see this kind of faint background. I want all the attention to go here. The detail scope, as you can see, is centered around here, everything else. So if this is 100% detail capacity for the painting, this is probably 80. This over here is 50 and, and onward. This is not as detailed as this, which is a big, fat check mark. All right? Beautiful. You eyeballed it or you plan or whatever the reason you did it right. There is a problem with colors, there's a problem with grayscale, there's a problem with the eyebrows. So there's a it's it's a rendering and color problem. So let's throw this into contrast, I mean into grayscale and see the contrast issues. When we look at this um, red here, the grayscale of the red, it's a bit dark. And if it's this dark, if we have a red that's really really dark, it's very far away from the saturation. So let me grayscale this again and grab that saturation, the mid-tone. This is too dark for a red. Is there any red visible here? Does anyone see real red? The real red sits up here. Look how high that is in value. But look at where the mid-tone is. Plop, all the way down there. What you did was you oversaturated from grayscale to color, if that was your process, you oversaturated it without the grayscale to back it up. Um, Matrilis is like, making sing masterpieces yawn too early is like uh, having an ugly developed monstrosity of a baby. On the bright side, you got a baby. <laughs> this uh, equals birth control. <laughs> that it's unhealthy and should have been aborted. Learning art with this to back abortion style. <laughs> equals to a pre-born baby. Okay, all right, everyone back to here, back to here. All right, so the mid-tone here is too dark. There's two ways to fix it. Raise this grayscale or desaturate the scarf because you're not going to find fabric that is that dark and that red. It's impossible. And that's why it's so scary dangerous when we have these 
you know, digital methods of making color, we, we're making mistakes we never made in traditional. So what I'm going to do is desaturate this because there simply is not enough brightness to support all this red. You've chosen the wrong kind of red. So can anyone summarize how I fixed this? Also what you've done is you've brought this color and with a soft brush just threw it over here. We don't need atmospheric fade. This is a this is a portrait. So never do that again. We don't need that. If this is going to recede into shadow, let it recede into shadow. Don't force one of the phenomenons that has happens or like the physical happenings that happens in environments. Don't force it into a, a still closed room portrait. You don't need that. You need that recession into the shadow on either sides, on the either on either side. So what is it about the way I fixed it? What is the rule? What is it about colors and grayscale that I'm always talking about? So next up would be to darken the scarf because if it's this dark in the shadows, it's not. It can't hit this high unless it has a high specular. If it's silk, and if it's silk, it won't hit this high unless it's the height, the very very highs, of that silk. So that means the highest point of every hill, adjacent to every shadow that it comes with, every valley that it comes with. So that means I'm going to only be erasing the shiniest bits where the light travels and that'll feel more like shine. Okay. Something like that. <clears throat> Flatten. Okay. And then I'm probably just going to get highlights. I'll look at the screen in a sec and just raise this shine here so it feels like silk. I'm not going to go in and render this fully. You might want to carry this highlight all the way over there. But you definitely should never have been. Um, maybe you want to break this piece here with another kind of addition, like another bulge of the fabric. Look up a good reference on how this works. Let's just take a look at the before and after. Never saturate without the appropriate grayscale behind it. It doesn't work. Ossie, oh, get out of here! It's about to undo my undo my before and after. Get the hell out of here! Actually, whoopsie. I didn't want that. I wanted to undo this bit. Okay. So before after do you see that alien red that red just didn't match the light source in the area it was just like it just came out of nowhere the light in the room is so dim the wash is green and this red which is the opposite of green just suddenly just shines you know like a crazy diva it doesn't make any sense if you wanted this to be this red you had you have to make it a lighter value uh, lighter values lower saturation no High light equals high saturation and vice versa. The colors have to be in their respective value range. Yes, Russ Fairchild. <clears throat> the local color needs to have the correct value to back it up. The local colors are dim, controlled by green. The local color is green. What happens is any color has to be matched with the local um, value. So it's not just one specific local color, Alyssa. It's all the colors need to respect the local value, which is the light, which is the light environment. The saturation has to fit the brightness. Not the brightness of the light source, the brightness of the object. Um, yeah, she's here. Oh, see, look, she sometimes, she knows I'm in class. She knows she has to be quiet. She never meows. But when I start, she is on the shoes. When I start teaching, she just goes crazy. Hey! What a friggin' god she's a goddess um uh so yeah you got you can't you you have to study for a while in just grayscale because it, it i mean unless you switch over to color you would never have made this mistake and this would never have been a learning opportunity for you so there's the fault in that that you study in grayscale maybe too long but i mean it's it's a simple matter of getting your color wheel where is it where is it um damn it 
Okay, critique you. It's a simple matter of grabbing the color wheel and grayscaling it. Okay? Damn you, locked piece of shit. GIF. It's a GIF, but it's not a GIF. The fuck? <clears throat> it's just grayscaling your color wheel and looking at the values required for these colors. So you need to be pretty bright on the map, like really just on the border of no man's land right here in the slums <laughs> to get this yellow. And this purple, look how dark it is right over here. Blue, even darker. It's one of the darker shades. But is it black? How about red? It's not darker than blue. It's just sitting right there. But yours, yours is really dark. It was down here. It was in this. As soon as we move up here, we have that nice red. And anything higher, you get even a more vibrant red. But you can't go too light here, then you won't get enough red. So black and white wash away the saturation. If you want a real vibrant version of that color, you can't use dark values. The next problem is the way you drew the eyebrow. An eyebrow is a texture. It is not an outline. It's not a symbol that we have over our heads. They don't float over our heads like they do on cartoon characters that have eyebrows that orbit outside of their head. So if you guys remember those cartoon characters that, you know, they're like, like, I don't know how they draw them. And the eyebrows are up here. This is not what our eyebrows are. They're not symbols that are separated from whatever the skin is. It's, it's a texture. It's a bunch of hairs. We can't go in and draw every single hair and we can't go in and draw an anime eyebrow made of made of sticks. All right? We have to make sure that we're using our brush to the to its full power. So what we got to do is taper and you know, detail and relief and bring in a texture and follow hairline growth like the the hair growth pattern. First thing is the fact that we've got tons and tons of any girl here plucks her eyebrows. You know where the problem areas are. <laughs> problem areas are right here at the top and right here at the base. The, all those areas need to be blended because us blending this is giving the feeling that these eyebrows are surrounded by tiny hairs. Also, brows have a growth pattern to them. So, what I usually do is the growth pattern grows up and to the sides and then down towards this point. So what I do is grab the upper color and just interrupt that smooth edge you have there that looks like a scow's brow, which is basically a drawn-in brow. Some girls, believe it or not, shave their brow just to draw it back on, which is really stupid. Plus it's very trendy nowadays to let your eyebrows grow out, cleaning them just a little bit, just minor grooming. The texture is in, that natural look is in now. So that tr those trends you have to be aware of as well because they're in your image. So that stick brow that you draw is not good. It's taken away and it's, it's all this crazy detail too because when it was a perfect line, it was just all this crazy contrast. You had this white white and this black black and it was like a perfect edge. That's the formula to detail. You can't do that. So I'm just trying to follow the hair growth pattern. It grows upward at first, just like this. Also, you're kind of missing a lower eyelid. And the eyes that you drew are a little bit elongated, so they're a little bit symbolic. So there it is. That, that's the diagnosis for your current issues as a student right now. You draw symbolically. You know how to blend. You've studied skin tones. You know how to make a nose look you know, nice and out of the way. You haven't drawn a symbol for the nose, but you kind of do have these shadows on either side of the nose, so that gives it away. But even the edge of the lip right here needs to be blended. Because that, that also is, is, you know, it's another, another, you have to think about how it grows, how it sits on the face. It's surrounded by skin. The pigmentation isn't limited, even when you have lipstick on. Look, unless you're using stupid dark lipstick way out of your skin palette range and, uh, and you've outlined it and you use lip liner and then you've got an even darker lipstick, at that point you get that clean edge, that editorial Maybelline look. That's never a good look. So you definitely draw symbolically. The 
is a major issue. You need to get that nip it in the bud while you still can. So this this here is by definition, I guess not not a masterpiece, but a but a piece. And here the person is, is experimenting very modestly with color. I recommend giving her some expression, so I'm going to raise her eyebrow up. I'm kind of just try, trying to square off the circles. But yeah, very modest use of color, very modest use of gesture, experimenting still with the stuff that they know. This is a nice way of experimenting with color, not, not trying to dress it up too much. If you have to add color and props, do it modestly, do it bit by bit. Stay focused on one topic for, you know, a month or something. Even a week, just give it a week, just focus on one topic. But even then, even this person who's done it so mod modestly has made mistakes. I mean, why make mistakes on a crazy masterpiece when you can just leave it as a study and make all the mistakes you want? I'm going to bring in the shine up here on top of the brow because what that does is it creates the feeling of a textured, oily brow. And I'm going to build up this cheek to also have a little bit of shine to it. And I'll show you guys the before and after. You might want to lighten up and brighten up this inner corner here to show off even more it's beauty. It enlarges the eye. And it also gives off the feeling of shine and texture and moisture. Right, you need that cast shadow and you need the whites of the eyes back. You need them back. And that pink you have in the eye, don't use that pink because that pink isn't, the body isn't capable of that pink right now. You need to use this instead, the lipstick color. That's what you throw in here for the waterline. Flatten the image. Darken this because it's actually in the shadow, so the highlight would be canceled out. Now we have very, very slight texture for the brow. It doesn't feel so intense, a texture. Um, she's kind of zoned out. Her eyes may, might need a little bit of focus. And all in all, crop the image. You don't need this much um, information on either side because it's not. There's nothing there. So before after. Let me crop again. You see how red that red was? It just didn't match the environment it was from. And the eyes were a little bit a little bit elongated. It just brought them in and squared them off. And the lips feel like they belong to skin because we've tapered off the edge a little bit so we've given off that natural imperfection that happens on the, edge of the edges of lips and the eyebrows feel less like cartoon brows. There is a slight texture to them, but it's so, it's very uh, untraceable. I think as, as a general um, direction of where, what you should continue studying, uh, just try to stop using so many darks in your colors. I think you become very afraid. Uh, so going a little bit lighter might just, you know, it's very hard matching a white or anything whitish or mid mid gray on something that you've already decided to be so dark. So this value right here is now is is a little bit dark. It's 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 like she's wearing a brown turban instead of a red turban. But here you forced it to be a little bit lighter. So maybe raise the value or decrease the saturation. Either way, it wasn't matching. Also, experiment a little bit with skin texture, sh skin shine, all of that stuff will help you draw a better, a better face. <clears throat> okay, so for this image here, the biggest problem I had with it is you got this extra little addition that from the side would be, this is what happens when we draw a three-quarter view. From the side it would be visible like this. Alright, so let's talk about what you've done here. Symmetry is off. I'm sure you know that already. The, the eye corners don't match. This is a this is not natural. Naturally, these two should match in placement. Um, it just doesn't it doesn't work like that in real life. If you do find someone that has this kind of discrepancy in the alignment of their eye, it's it's an actual um, it's it's visible. It's it's a problem. It's not normal. You notice it right away. 
what you've told me here is that there's an elevation here catching some light and this elevation kind of just carries up like that so this person's got a cheekbone but over here shaved off there's no these contour lines are not mirrored on the other side this guy's got a very asymmetrical face and then we've got this little bump what's this little bump adjacent to what, what is it telling on this side there's lots of symmetry on the human face you gotta watch out what is this bump representing which part that we see here it, it either has to be a depression or or a, or a highlight it's either or because look at the bump there's an actual visible bump so this bump either there's a depression under here or there's a highlight here one thing or another maybe this thing right here was you unconsciously realizing you had to start representing this bulge here maybe after you flip the canvas because this bulge needs to be visible and this cheekbone needs to be visible this uh, this jawline here alright so let's fix that filter liquify so this is what happens when you guys do a form study I mean uh, three quarter views without really, ask, without really asking what a three quarter view is you have to know the contour lines that sit on the face on front view and what happens to them when we look at them from the side sorry I'm gonna give him that that one face from that one guy who won that one boxing match and da -da -da. <laughs> I'm trying to remember his, his name and all that comes up is that sound I mean that song um, Arnold Schwarzenegger? No. Rocky, Rocky. Okay. Alright, so what we have to do is match these. This will be, a, it won't be as high as this one, no, because it'll be tucked in. I'm going to match this eye here. Increase the density. Lower that up here. And if he's got that kind of smolder doohickey that guys do. You gotta match the start of the brows together, maybe just a little bit higher on this side, and just give him that. Now he looks like Johnny Bravo. Match that, match the nostrils. What's his name? The actor, what's his Rocky? Yeah, no, John, not John Cena. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. So when I say contour lines, before, after. I mean the stuff that's visible from the side that is a bulge and a straight line from the front view but then it becomes a bulge from the side. You see that asymmetry that was there? Every, everything was kind of just gravitating towards that distant ear because you chose a certain kind of bone structure for the face but you couldn't back it up when it came to three quarter view. And now all we have to do is just, maybe he has that kind of asymmetrical face, maybe he is a boxer and he's been beaten to shit, I don't know. But we need to give, this is an elevation, so we need to give it the same amount of brightness. Sorry, I'm not using the same texture brush. That carries all the way up here. So the high highlight, the high point, sits at the highest point here of the lip. And that's the milk mustache I always talk about. It's no mystery, it's no crazy formula. It's, it's just the, the high point here that we know by signature, by the way the face is formed. Whether you're a male, female, or, or elf you're going to have that highlight there. So that's what he's doing. He's kind of giving us the duck lip. That's what's going to happen. The highlight's going to sit at the top. And then the nose, which should be, it's pretty much just tucked in. This nose is really, um, really broken. It seems like it's been forced in. I need to sort of blend down. Um, I need to unify this shadow here so it seems like this massive brow bone that he's got here actually feels like it's casting a shadow. Here we need to show off the elevation of this brow bone so we need to cut the, br um, the eyebrow, the forehead off like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm always coughing. My voice is really, really, really tired. I know it's a kind of monotone and it's breaking. By the way, I watched one of my old videos. My voice used to sound so kitty. Oh my god, I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> people listen to me. Back then I had like five viewers. 
a class. Can you believe it? <laughs> okay, so this white, this yellow that you're using is great. The skin tones are great. Just remember that this white, this yellow eventually turns into white at the hottest spot. Okay, I'm just trying to give the nose some highlights. Careful with the lashes and careful with the shine on the eye. Male male eyes don't don't do that. It turns very very feminine very very quickly. So be careful with that. All right. So ready for the before and after. Um, one more thing. This I don't know. That's the way you drew the nose, I guess. But the side, the shadows on the side shouldn't be that dark. It should all be this cast shadow. The cast shadow of the nose should be somewhat brighter. Let me choose a shadow you've already. I'll erase it down. I'll erase away what I don't want. We've got to bring in that Hitler stash a little bit. We'll, light, we'll brighten it up because the skin is so bright, it's not capable of just jumping into shadow like that. And you got to move the shadow around the contours. So it does a dip and then it goes back up on the cupid's bow. I'm just lighten that up a little. Tuck that down. Hello bases. <clears throat> so everyone ready? Before? After. That eyebrow, like I, I still feel tempted to lower it. It's but it's it's the personality, I guess. That's what he's doing. Uh, I'm I'm gonna lower it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now oh, he looks dreamy. Okay, before, after. How do you avoid this? Can anyone tell me how you can avoid this kind of mistake? <clears throat> Hi, Taylor. Can anyone tell me how you can avoid these kinds of three-quarter view mistakes? <clears throat> Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, that's his name. What an Italian name. I'm, I'm just waiting for the response. Sorry, YouTubers. Um, wait, what's wrong with my mic? Did you change mics? Mics make huge differences sometimes. No, I didn't change the mic. In fact, I'm getting a better mic than this but soon, but this is the same one. Does that, does that sound back, by the way? If Photoshop didn't ask you to save, then you saved. Okay, so let's see. Form study. No, plan your guidelines. Yes, planning. That's it. You learn and practice the basics of seeing proportions and angles, edges, drawing forms. Flipping the canvas, checking symmetry, flip the image, but it's planning. Symmetry lines. Yeah, heat FM. Uh, measuring looks like Zac Efron. Okay, so it's 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 planning, and the planning happens simply after you've decided. You know, you do a little sketch. First five minutes of the drawing, canvas is empty by now. You just do a little, a little doohickey like this. You now you do your planning, the face, blah blah blah. Plop, 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 plop. These lines aren't here just for you to look at them and feel better about yourself because you drew them. These lines are here because they make a difference. You have to use them. You have to actually use this. It's like after they just discharge you from the hospital and they give you like a medication or they give you like an instruction on how to take care of your, I don't know, surgery bandages or whatever. So they're not doing that just to be fancy or informal. Those things actually help you. I should know. I didn't follow them. But you have to you have to do this stuff so that these get thrown back down into into low opacity and we go in there to sketch out what you're drawing you have to look at these okay so the ears between the eye and the mouth I'm just gonna plop that there inner corners match outer corners match he's beautiful so I'm gonna give him that lower 
uh, that sort of inner tilt, and then I'm just going to draw. And then the nostrils are going to sit between this line and this line, and three-quarter view, there's always a little bit of compression, so this has to be smaller than this. Um, this has to be less wide than this. But these stay the same. The, the verticals all stay the same. It's just the horizontals flip a little bit on the distant side. I mean, they, they squeeze a little bit, and that's it. But everything is still sitting on the same horizontal and vertical lines. It's just that this distant side is a little bit smaller, or a little bit uh, less wide than the closed side. All right? That saves you so much time, and your blending is so good, and your color use is so good. You really should back it up with some good measurement. All right? So before, after. And if you feel listen to me if you have a feeling a gut feeling in your guts that says yo you're missing something on this other side we flipped the canvas and it just feels like there's something missing and you responded to it by adding this little bulge give it a chance it's your brain is telling you something looks wrong so you got to give it a chance okay so I'm gonna flatten this and yes and if you guys want these back you just message me on Facebook this is a little bit stylized, um, so I'm not really sure what to say. Even if you stylize, you kind of want to follow some rules. So I'm going to darken the foreground and leave the background white. I know you're all gasping, but I'm going to leave the background white because what we're trying to Im imitate here is the feeling of a silhouette, right? So the light is behind her. And what happens is we're going to leave the highlights only where we really need them. So now it's a little bit more bold. And I'm going to get my eraser. And I'm just going to erase away the areas where we know we want a little bit of brightness. And this is just the on switch I always talk about right over here. So the forehead is one of the brightest areas on the face. We've got the nose. We've got the cheeks and the chin. The chin is always a little bit darker than the rest. And altogether, the side of her nose is a little bit dark. Why am I constantly... <clears throat> it's just a little bit dark, so you might want to lighten it up because the light is coming in this direction and this part of her brow. Why is there so much color in here? Is that the grain? As part of her brow here will slowly recede into shadow and this part of her brow will cast a shadow down. The light here is very very particular. Alright after that all we have left is symmetry issues so again more planning. This lip is a little bit outside of the um, the norm. She could be just um, having, she could be, have an asymmetrical mouth, actually. So that's fine. So the bottom of her, of her mouth like this will have some shadow to it. Because her mouth is puckering out so far, it's going to cast a shadow on, around the, the chin like that. And then another problem is, look at the detail here. All of a sudden, there's all this detail in this eyebrow because this eyebrow is too, the edge is too clean. What we need to do is just fan out that edge a little bit. And then some more cast shadows. Perfect lines. And then now we can compare the before and after. And you can see it's kind of better for the design to have some whites in place. It's just, um, it's too much white. It, it becomes hard to look at. When you have something like this, now you have a light environment. And I think if the light is coming from this side, this side of her nose would be darkest. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what the reference spoke, but I see a need for a cast shadow there. But I'll take it out just to sort of respect what you've chosen. But I think, in my opinion, this looks much better. It looks more like a statement. You can even make the background even more light. You can make it full white and get away with it. Because now we're, we're kind of cheating. We're making it look like she's a silhouette. But we're still showing off her face. 
which looks really nice. Another cool thing to do is to remember the beard, the shadow on the lower half of the, of the face. Just like this. Everything recedes into shadow. So that's, that's kind of nice because her face is now emerging from outside of the shadows. And air, any areas that don't have the on switch on them, the light will be, will recede into shadow. The neck, everything. The neck should be nowhere near in value as the face. The face is getting all that attention. And at the very end, we just want to bring in those final little specks of highlight that make all the difference. Just like that. Sharp light around the chin. And a little bit of highlight as it climbs up. Not too bright though, because the chin is receding. So it's going to do a little dot. And then the chin eventually fades into the shadow of the neck. So you guys forget to, to sort of surround the face with a shadow, with a halo. That's what makes it feel like the room is really dark. So before, too much light doesn't make any sense. And I know it is stylish. It's stylized. It's a, it's a stylization. So it's fine to break some rules and bring in those crazy whites. But even then, even to, a, to the point of stylization, it's hard to get away with using that much light. And now if you really want to make a crazy break of the rules, you can do it on the nose ring. You can make the entire nose ring super duper freaking light. And you'd get away with it because that, that, that nose ring has a texture to it in the real world. And that nose ring has a shine, so you can exaggerate that shine. So remember, the rule is exaggerate only where applicable. It's not exaggerate everything and then stand behind the excuse of style. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a shine. And I'm just going to erase some of the shine away because it's going to have the nose in the way. Merge down. I'm going to sharpen it. And then recede that into some shadow of the nostril. Okay, so before, after. Too much white. Now this feels like a real statement, and you've really built up the values, and she really is like, she feels like the way you've drawn, she has a Nubian nose, Nubian mouth, she feels like a dark-skinned girl. But over here, if she was so dark-skinned, her skin would never have hit this high level of white, even to the point of stylization. Now she really feels like a darker-skinned uh, girl. This skin tone right here could use just a little bit of highlight. The skin under the eyes is always a little bit stretched out and shiny. So throwing a little bit of highlight under there kind of does, takes care of that little detail and brings in more info, more info, more, more intrigue, more, more to look at. Okay, so let me just darken that. <clears throat> this side is darker than this side. Okay, so... Okay, so before, after. Does anyone have any questions? This lip is sticking out, so I'm going to catch some light. I felt like she was more white skinned, now very dark skinned. I think she was supposed to be white skinned. I mean, dark skinned. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, the shine on the nose ring. So that's why you have to keep an eye out. Base is loaded. Um, you have to keep an eye out for texture. Texture is really what makes the difference um, in all of this. And finally, if you really want to make that crazy statement, go into your levels and bring all that down if you want to and raise the whites up. Now you have a more balanced climb. And if you want to do this, if you can keep it soft compared to before where it was just a bunch of white everywhere not really building it up if you want to keep it this way. Um, thanks everyone for watching my channel. Uh, please don't forget, doing masterpieces is the worst thing you can do to your development. 
as an artist. You, you have to do the homework. If you're not doing the homework, you're not going to improve. Don't think by one masterpiece after another you're going to improve. That's going to take years. It's going to take years where it could just take a couple months to improve on a face if you just did grayscale studies. It's going to take years to improve on faces if you're waiting for the next chance you have a, have a masterpiece to, to study the forms of a face. That's terrible. Don't do that to yourself. And that's it. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great day. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye-bye.